Hi, I'm Jim Redd, and this is Collision Course World History. Today we'll look at the decline of the Ottoman Empire. First, a little background in case you forgot about the Ottoman Empire, known for their funny-slash-awesome hats and funny-slash-awesome name. The Ottomans were a large, land-based empire that arose in the 13th century, A.D., of course, and fell in 1923. In its peak, under Suleiman the Magnificent, the empire was the most powerful in the world, encompassing much of the Mediterranean region. However, we're not here to discuss its greatness, but rather the path that led it ultimately to its fall. who brought down the great empire down a little was Mustafa II, not to be confused with Mufasa, who was a powerful and benevolent ruler of the animal kingdom. Mustafa II was known for his narcissism, envisioning himself as the savior of the empire and always putting himself at the head of the army. The event in his reign that began the decline was the signing of the Treaty of Karlowitz on January 26, 1699, in which the Ottomans lost Hungary and with it some of their influence over Europe. Austria came into possession of this land, and with it gained enough power to be a potent influence in the region, and reach its greatest extent. You'll hear a bit more about the Austrians later, but basically, they were an important enemy to the Ottomans. Mustafa II was succeeded by Ahmed III. Ahmed III was actually not a bad leader. He got the empire on good terms with France, and he also came very close to defeating Russia, which would have been very good for the Ottomans. In other news, he approved the economy, and the first printing press in Arabic was effected during his reign. However, he was a highly unpopular ruler due to his ostentatious spending on comfort and luxury. Eventually, there was a great revolt, and Ahmed III was forced to step down. Following Ahmed III was Mahmud I. Due to his tumultuous environment in which he ascended, the insurgents ruled for the first few weeks of his term. Eventually, things were calmed down and people were strangled, though not in that order. After the villain was quelled, the main issues were the wars with Russia, Austria, and Persia. However, our hunchback did not take an active role in our leadership, but rather spent time in his writing poetry. He left much of the ruling to the viziers. Oh, is it time for an open letter? Well, let's see if there's a secret compartment today. Oh, look! A hat covered in the ashes of inferior hats. An open letter to hats. Hats, there's something about you that confers so much power. Crowns, the marking of leaders. Even the government in a monarchical dooley wop is often referred to as the crown. I mean, look at the evidence. Abdul Masid, the last sultan of the Ottomans, wore a tiny fez atop his head. As the empire came crashing down around him, 600 years of progressively smaller hats leading to the downfall of the last remaining great empire. But at one point, its hats were the envy of the world. An example, Suleiman the Magnificent! Look at that wondrous globe atop his head. Another, and perhaps the best example of power through hats, is the Pope. No one can rightly say that the Pope would be the same without such a beautiful papal hat. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's papal. <laughs> Even today, the hat holds power. A party hat in the online role-playing game RuneScape sells for over $1,300. A burning team captain in the war-themed hat collection simulator Team Fortress 2 goes for $3,500. It's not even real! Best wishes, Sean Bean. Subsequent to Mahmud 1 was Osman 3. His lengthy reign lasted a whole 
three years. That's over 1,000 days. During his time as Sultan, there was a rise in measures taken against non-Muslims. For example, Christians and Jews were forced to have distinctive badges or clothes. When Osman took the throne, he started to go a little funny in the head. <laughs> Maybe he couldn't handle the hat, but who knows. What we do know is that Osman III, unlike the preceding sultans, hated music. He banished all musicians from the palace. In addition, he grew to despise female company. Eventually, he took to wearing metal shoes so women could hear him coming and flee the area. Somehow, he managed to marry Layla with no problems. Afterwards, Mustafa III took the wheel of the Ottoman Empire. Mustafa III was big on military and governmental reforms to stop the Ottoman Empire from plummeting further into the ever-deepening hole that they currently reside in. He also attempted to rise his empire out of the decline by declaring war on Russia, which ended in disastrous defeat shortly after his death. But, before he died, he and his vizier, Raghi Mehmed Pasha, directed their reforms toward the results of it and not the causes. This made it so the reforms were ineffective, so overall, Mustafa did nothing except declare war on Mother Russia, which they did lose, mostly because of their weak army, which Mustafa was aware of, thus proving that the size of his hat was inversely proportional to the size of his noggin. And left with this mess was Abdul Hamid I, imprisoned for most of his life by his cousins and brother, the previous sultans. This left him with an uncaring disposition towards state affairs, and he was easily manipulated by his advisors. He was very religious and a pacifist to boot, but he was forced into war and eventually ended up losing Crimea to the Russians. Despite military failure, he was much loved by the people as the most gracious sultan of the Ottomans. He was so religious, in fact, that he was called a veli, which means saint. He was also responsible for some educational improvements. Now let's keep in mind that although the Ottomans were declining, they hadn't fallen yet. They were still pretty strong. Now let's take it to the thought bubble. I'm talking about the Battle of Karansabes. Remember the Austrians? They were supposed to defend the city of Karansabes from invading Turks. Well, when the cavalry arrived upon the scene of where they thought they would be battling, they ran into some gypsies who offered to sell them some schnapps, or hard alcoholic beverages. This isn't going to end well. So, they bought the beverages, and they just sat around and drank for a while when the Austrian infantry happened upon them. The Austrian cavalry didn't want to give them any of their alcohol, so they set up some fortifications around the barrels. Eventually a shot was fired, and then mass confusion broke loose. It was crazy. Everyone was running everywhere and shooting at everything. The drunken cavalrymen were so scared of the Turks that they shot at every little shadow moving in the forest. And what they were really shooting at was Austrian soldiers. So, lots of confusion ensued, 10,000 dead Austrians, the Holy Roman Emperor was pushed into a creek, and the Austrians fled the scene. The Turks later arrived upon the scene, and finding a whole bunch of dead Austrians and no one else, easily took the city. The last of the big cheeses was Selim III, an Ottoman Sultan reigning from 1789 to 1807, with his rule abruptly ended when his own Janissaries imprisoned and killed him. Something tells me they're a little upset. I have no idea why, as he wanted to be hip and cool like Europe, and began the westernization of the Ottoman Empire. So all these mediocre sultans led to the decline of the Ottoman Empire for obvious reasons. Some, you know, just didn't care, some didn't govern, some governed but really crappily, and the only one who was any good was ousted just for, you know, eating bonbons and sitting in beanbags all day, although he did rule. Well, this decline, although it may not seem too important, you know, it led to the fall, and hey, if the Ottoman Empire was still around, who knows what might be happening? Well, we do know, we do know, that the hats would be better. Thanks for watching. As always, GG, WP, no re, Jim Red. Cause of course, World History was directed, filmed, and written by yours truly, Devin Choa and the late Daniel Reichman.